Welcome to Digital Transformers, the show that connects you with what you need to build, manage, and operate your digital supply chain. Join your host in a timely discussion on new and future business models with industry-leading executives. The show will reveal global customer expectations, real-world deployment challenges, and the value of advanced business technologies like artificial intelligence, blockchain, and robotic process engineering. And now, we bring you Digital Transformers. Hello, everyone. This is Kevin L. Jackson, and welcome to Digital Transformers on Supply Chain Now. You know, digital transformation strategy is really about changing your organization through significant process improvement. And ERP, or Enterprise Resource Planning, is, can be really vital to this process. In this SAP-sponsored discussion, we're going to meet Martin Stenzig, the CTO of Rising. Rising is a premier SAP consulting firm that enables businesses to achieve a truly intelligent enterprise. They, process, they provide services and their proprietary applications that leverage the SAP business technology platform to Fortune 500 and small and medium-sized enterprises. Thank you for joining us, Martin. Thanks for having me, Kevin. So, uh, CTO, tell me a little bit about uh, your company. Yeah, so our company, as you mentioned, is is rising, um, rising mm -hmm. with a Z. <laughs> as a matter of fact, uh, we consider <laughs> ourselves a, a premier SAP consulting firm, and we're focusing on on certain topics within SAP. So our customers usually define us or describe us as a big boutique company because we're we're very um, very knowledgeable in certain areas, and that's what we're focused on. The four mm -hmm. areas that we focus on are enterprise asset management. And there we're talking about technical assets. So you're talking about power plants, oil refineries, you know, rail yards, you know, that type of, of asset. The second one is human capital management. In a way, it's, it's people assets. Uh, yeah. So we're talking about that human being. How do we make sure is that um, we're training them, we're keeping them in the organization, we're keeping them happy, we're keeping them as, as uh, engaged as we can. The third one is is more a, a vertical. Um, it's consumer industries. So especially the retail and fashion side of the business mm -hmm. is where we have deep domain expertise combined with the SAP product expertise that we're playing. And then the last one, um, not the least one, is the SAP business technology platform these days. Uh -huh. So how do we take that digital technology and applying it so that we're getting the best out of every company? How do we digitizing the business and, and optimizing the business processes. Um, and as a matter of fact, you know, we're, we're seeing it almost as the glue between the SAP standard product offering to sort of you know, improve um, the things that uh, you are special in or to interface systems that SAP by default doesn't interface. So that's where the business technology platform comes in um, and plays a big role for us. Wow, it sounds like you have really, uh, you covered a waterfront when, when it comes to uh, business and how the business is run. And as, as the CTO, I, I guess you do a lot with technology. I mean, it's in, in, in your title. So what is your specific role when it, when it comes to uh, supporting your customers there at Rising? Yeah, so I see my role as, as sort of driving innovation by combining, on the one hand, the latest mm -hmm. technologies uh, with a rising subject matter expertise, but at the end of the day, uh, to generate measurable benefits to our customers. So, uh, you listen, I like toys as much as the next guy, and especially as a CTO, we have access <laughs> to, uh, to the great technologies that there is. But, yeah. you know, my, my usual intent is to weed out sort of all the stuff that looks good and sounds nice, but doesn't really bring any business value. Um, and listen, let's be honest, we have some of those in the industries. Uh, yeah. um, so for me, um, I, I sort of line them up in the in the order of how much business benefits and how real are they to the business. You know, we have some ideas that will be great 10 years from now, but are not matured yet. And we have other things that we think that the industry should adopt right now, but people don't because they simply don't know that it exists. Yeah? They've seen it on yeah. TV. They think it's science fiction, 
but you know, it's, it's not really out there. So that's sort of the other part of my role to educate um, our business leaders uh, both internally and externally to say, this is what's possible. We have done proof of concepts. We can show you the numbers. Um, let's get real about it and, and help you and your business sort of generate and, and reap that benefit and, and bring it in. So uh, I'm going to apologize here for going off on a tangent, okay? But I detect a bit of a German accent, I think. I mean, I've, I actually visited the uh, SAP campus there in Heidelberg and had a great time. So I may be wrong. Uh, give us a little bit <laughs> no, of your you're background. Not, <laughs> you're not wrong. It has been 20 plus years, though. So yeah, I got to be. Um, I, uh, I sort of started my career there, but then shortly thereafter, I got an offer to, to come to the United States and uh -huh. have been years ever since. Um, uh, my family is here. My wife is from New Orleans. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm certainly, <laughs> uh, fully, <laughs> full American these days. All right. So, so how, what prepared you for your current role as, as CTO? How, how long have you been like? you know, working in technology or working in business or specifically, uh, you know, dealing with this SAP technology? Yeah, funny enough is um, I started in, in sort of this technology bubble 25 years ago, uh -huh. um, originally as a developer, you know, a technical consultant. So that gave me a good foundation to, to look into, um, you know, the technology aspects of things. But, you know, back in the days, I was working for a very, very small company. So which helped me see not just one side of a particular business, but always sort of combined the business side with, you know, the sales side with the implementation side. And, it, yeah. you know, you learn very quickly that, you know, if you promise a customer an outcome and you're working in a small company, there's sort of a 50-50 chance that you actually have to deliver on the promise. <laughs> yeah. You give a promise and you just step away and let somebody else deliver or not. So that is one aspect. Then throughout my career at, at Rising, um, mm -hmm. I ran the operational day-to-day uh, -day activities for the EEM line of business for a while. And that sort of gave me the other, the other part, you know, the operational sense for, you know, what are organizations actually going through that are dealing with sort of the operational realities we all have these days. You know? And it yeah. has gotten worse, obviously, in the, in the past few years with COVID, with global, global you know, dynamics that, you know, are, are surprising us every single day. So if you take those two aspects, the technology aspect on the one side, the, the general business understanding and the operational understanding on the other side and bring that together, I believe that that's sort of what, what prepared me really for my current role where, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm looking at technologies, but I'm looking at it in the context of, of business improvements, um, efficiency yeah. gains, safety gains. You know, those are the things that um, allow me to fill this role successfully, I believe. Wow. Um in uh, in the introduction, we talked about uh, Rising as helping their clients achieve a quote truly intelligent enterprise, and and, and that you actually leverage the SAP business technology uh, platform. So, as a premier consultant, what is your your business model? Do you just work with you know, companies that already have SAP or, uh, you know, what is your, your ideal client? What real value do you deliver? Yeah, uh, that's an excellent question. So um, we started out and we're still at the core, predominantly a premier consulting company. So mm -hmm. customers ask us for their help because we have certain, you know, subject matter expertise, um, SAP knowledge, um, business knowledge, industry knowledge that we're bringing to our customers in order to okay. make them better. Uh, and we usually mm -hmm. like to um, look for um, customer engagements that really appreciate what I call the mutually beneficial relationship. So you know why you're bringing us in. You don't just see me as sort of a person that needs to sit in the seat for 12 hours. Right. Um, but really, you, you value my my input, and you see me as a as a full partner. So now that's one aspect of it. Um, over the years, we have found that um, you know 
there are situations when we are getting sort of the same question or the same request 15 times. You know? And that mm-hmm. led us to the point where we said, okay, why don't we take those, those common themes and distilling the solution into more a product offering? Uh, so we are yeah. having solutions that we then build on um, the business technology platform and even their predecessors. So we were one of the founding members of the SAP um, BTP Partner Advisory Council oh, um, wow. because we were one of the early companies that bet on SAP's business technology platform or the HANA Cloud platform, as it was called in the day. So, so that mm-hmm. is the the product offerings. That's sort of a secondary income stream that we have. So we are by default a product company, uh, but we're also offering um, software solution in the market based on the business technology platform. And today we are seeing sort of two business models that. Um, SAP allows us to to run. One is the classic SaaS model. Yeah? So uh, okay. we're taking this this content that we build and we're making it available as a software as a service. So customer essentially goes to a web page, um, opens up the application, you know, can facilitate their business process, and yeah. they're just paying us a fee. Yeah? They do not yeah. see or or have to worry about what's behind the scenes. Behind the scenes for us is the SAP business technology platform that we use it to run it. Now, the second model that is getting more attractive is a lot of customers have already bought the business technology platform. So rather than charging them for, quote unquote, the hosting on, and the underlying basic services, again, um, we you know have a secondary commercial model that is what I call the content model. So you're still getting the same business benefit. You're still getting all the facets yeah. of that application, but sort of the infrastructure of it um, uh, is used um, in something that you're already paying for. So it's your license that we're deploying this content into, which now has multiple benefits. You know, we're using up the, the entitlements that you already purchased from SAP. We're making use of the business technology platform configurations that you might have done around single sign-on. We can readily use. So there are a lot of benefits that that are playing into it. But both of those are something. Uh, both of the commercial models are something that we are entertaining with our customers today, and we're very successful with it. So as you work with your customers and client uh, on on this technology platform, do you actually develop other apps uh, on top of the uh, back end, so to speak? Yes, exactly. So we're developing additional enhancements, uh, extension Mm -hmm. apps to SAP. So they're utilizing in the core SAP standard functionality but then enhancing or filling white spaces that SAP is not intending to go into because they're not big enough or they are unique to a particular industry or a particular use case that doesn't make sense for SAP to go into because it's not sort of broadly attractive um, or there's a strategic reason reason why SAP doesn't want to go into. And those are the areas that we as partners are filled. And the benefits that we, we see and that we're bringing to the companies you know, both on the consulting side, but also with these products are, are sort of can usually be categorized in, in a couple of areas. Number one is, you know, we're driving revenue up. So companies sell more. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second one might be uh, companies manage their people better. So we're building and, and managing applications in order to, to optimize the HCM processes. And then the third one is uh, one that is is imperative, but you yeah. know we still have to spill it out. Companies need to work safer and in a more sustainable fashion. Um, sustainability is a big topic these days, as you know. Um, predominantly, oh, yeah. it's, it's sort of it's driven, in my opinion, out of Europe, but it's it's also now gain, gaining steam in in the United States. And lastly, um, companies execute their their processes more efficiently. So we're talking about doing more with less. Yeah, that's mm. sort of the classic classic notion. But the other three are, are clearly sort of the initial drivers. And then, you know, the fourth one is a common one. I would say that probably 60% of all of our engagements we're driving are justified with number four, which is, um, you know, driving up operational efficiency. So, so doing uh-huh. more with less or doing more with what we already have. So, so you know, getting back to sort of the, the core of our program, what does this have to do with digital transformation? What, you know, what is digital transformation from you and your, your customers' point of view? 
Yeah, I think digital transformation is 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 almost an overused word these days because everybody yeah. sort of wants to slap it onto their project in order to get the funding. So yeah, it's just a buzzword, right? <laughs> but what we're seeing is we're seeing some um, yeah various examples. Let me sort of talk you through a few of them. The first uh-huh. example I would bring is is a company that moves from their old SAP legacy system that might have been implemented 20, 25 years ago to a new version of SAP. Uh, for once, you know, because SAP is is going to stop the support of the old versions. But right. usually um, the bigger reason is that we're seeing additional values, additional business benefits coming out of migrating to that new uh, to that new system. Mm-hmm. And or it's prepping and it's setting the foundation for building all these digital solutions on top of that, that, that we're going to talk about going forward. So as part of that, uh, they're really making use of new functionalities within SAP, S4, or mm-hmm. success vectors. So that's sort of the core applications on SAP. But then it is also easier and more accessible to you know, extensions that we're building in the business technology platform. And we believe that that's really where you find the golden nuggets, as I call them. Uh, uh, we, mm-hmm. all, we firmly believe that the core systems that SAP has, SAP S4 and success vectors, they will bring you, you know, um, a lot of benefits in itself. But if you're looking for sort of the, I always call it the SpaceX e- effect, I know where you're now talking about a factor of you want to get two times, three times more effective, you know, that's usually right. when you're looking into the business technology platform and it's digital enablement to say, hey, here are the tools that we can use to automate processes that we we had done purely manual in the past or you know, that require a lot of labor in order to, to execute them. So that's sort of bucket number one. Bucket number two, and, and a simple example, would be um, what SAP calls the digital boardroom. You know? mm-hmm. We have solutions and we build solutions that allow you to walk into a boardroom um, with simply a URL that you open up in a web browser rather than printing out sort of your 20-page p- PowerPoint <laughs> presentation and a stack of paper. Um, yeah. And then the usual starts is, you know, you get the first question in a board level meeting, which is, okay, so how is that how is that lever number, the people that left the organization the last month broken down by by line of business? And because you haven't prepared for that, you know, in a PowerPoint presentation that is printed out on a piece of paper, you can't do that. If you have the digital boardroom available, I can literally real time slice and dice into that on uh, into, into that organ information and get the insights right then and there at my fingertips, and I don't need to go back. You know, we can make decisions right then and there, and it doesn't have yeah. to be the, the proverbial, oh, let's take this offline into another discussion and defer the decision to some sometimes else. So that's number two. And the last example is a company that at the moment sends out, you know, people every five years carrying a clipboard and drive from power pole to power pole to assess, you know, whether or not the power pole is still upright, whether or not, you know, <laughs> we have infestation, um, or even, frankly, validate that it's still there because it yeah. didn't get in a traffic stop. So digital transformation in that case is, for us, we can fly drones with a LiDAR detector, so laser imaging um, across the, the, the area where those poles are um, established, and then subsequently analyze that point cloud through a machine learning model to automatically identify where are the poles? In what conditions are they at? What transformers are on it? You know, how much are mm-hmm. they leaning? How much is that different to last time? So it's an unbelievable efficiency gain that we can suddenly drive um, without having to send out people with a car and and create pollution in the field. So those are the real the real drivers where we're getting really excited about digital transformation when we're talking to customers about those kinds of scenarios and not just simply sort of upgrading an SAP system from one, one version to the, to the other. Wow, but that seems like there's a lot would go into all of that. You can't just, you know, snap your fingers and be digitally transformed. Oh, um, no. Yeah, <laughs> is this, you know, uh, how does this happen? I I imagine this is a a, a journey that you really have to focus on? How, how do you lead your clients uh, into or through this, this journey? Yeah, it, it, is, it is a journey. It is an evolution. It, is, um, it, it sometimes feels like 
and I lovingly sometimes des describe, you know, even even ours, us and our colleagues as still uh -huh. crawling in the mud compared to what we can do and standing up. <laughs> but, but no, um, so education is is sort of the, the first um, the first piece. Uh, mm -hmm. um, in order to get funding on a cost on a customer side, a customer has to a understand what's possible and then b be able to evaluate and put a value on on those improvements. And that's okay. really where you know the the first challenge comes in um, because of the the challenges, the, the just the business challenges we have today that we talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, don't take enough time and, and listen, us included as senior managers, uh, we don't take enough time in the day to just take a breath, you know, read up on what's possible and then evaluate whether or not that's just hype or this is real. What we have found is that a lot of the things that sort of we thought 10 years ago were just sort of a science fiction dream are mm -hmm. reality today. You know, you you see the hype about JBT, GBT4, huh, as yeah. AI models, Everybody is talking about it now. Again, there is a lot of that is, is sort of over the top, but there are some use cases where which you can take out of it. And we have the same thing on you know, the enterprise asset management side on the HCM side, um, you know. But we always want to put it in perspective. So I'm gonna give you some some concrete examples. When mm -hmm. you're applying machine learning um, to to HR information, there's a variety of things that you just need to be concerned about. Yeah. Does it mean that AI shouldn't be used in HR? Not at all. But it, it means that understand what you're getting yourself into. Be prepared. Have the right governance processes in place to not disclose information, to not have you know, information or, or uh, so biased information used in, your, in the building of your model. So all of those things are something, go into it with your eyes wide open. But that's sort of the education that we're talking about. That's where we're helping customers with. So that's step number one. Mm -hmm. Step number two is, is merely the, I, I always call it the comfort level. Yeah? SAP oh, organizations okay. have been run very efficiently and very well over the past few years, um, 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah. Um, what, what, they are, what they are lacking is, is that agility sometimes. You know, a lot of that organization are, are built to run solidly as a foundation and they have an uptime guarantee of 99.99%. Um, but that, what that usually lacks is the time to step back and look at the new stuff that you can do. So mm. again, education, but also the comfort level of IT organizations to say, okay, while you're doing this, while you're running your SAP system as solidly as you have, you know, let's look over the fence and see how does new SAP look like and what are the components mm -hmm. of the new SAP foundation that you need to set up and how is the business technology platform now allowing you to, to do things better and be more agile all the while having the stable core and nobody wants to change that. So it's not that we're right. suddenly going to unstable, but we want to combine the best of both worlds, a stable core mm -hmm. with the agility and the opportunity to drive additional business benefits um, in the business technology platform. So those are the things. Um, and then we're looking at, at pure business modeling. Yeah? So you're looking at, yeah. okay, what, what, should, what are the scenarios, what are the use cases that, that we should be driving? What are they, uh, what is the cost? Um, you know, what's the effort to get there? And then frankly, what's the change management aspect? Yeah? Um, good news, bad news is, um, what we have found is that, especially the younger generations and a lot of people yeah. sort of, you know, um, uh, have have opinions on on the younger generations. We find that the good news is, um, you give them a new app, and they don't need a six day training class. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they, they're digital they, natives. <laughs> exactly. They, they just say, "Give me the app." And the good news also is that they will be able to use your app. And if they are not able to use your app, well, you have a data point as well, which is your app is probably not intuitive enough. Uh, yeah. for, uh, you know, an easy, easy adoption. But that's sort of the, the change management aspects that, you know, we have to go through as part of the digital adoption. So the, the human factor is probably the most, the, the biggest slowdown. And it's not a negative thing. It's just the reality yeah. of things. People are the, the limiting factor in sort of adopting change in the organization. So that's something we have to uh, bring into that business case as well. And then, you know, once you are there, once the organization is comfortable with the idea. Once the business case is justified, then it's about perfect execution. And that's sort of where we pride ourselves to, 
and that's the German in me coming out to say, okay, <laughs> we're executing like clockwork against our plan and making sure yeah. that we're delivering or even over delivering to our customers in order to make that successful. And ultimately, you know, getting the benefits out of the business case that we have anticipated. You know, I, I, I kind of hear a common thread through the human capital management, the, the use of technology and the changing or new innovative business models. Uh, and, and, and I see that as actually being open to the art of possibilities, right? The thing that there are, there's constant change and the organization has to be welcome constant change with, with open arms. Is, is, is that something that you see in your clients or is this something that you help with when, when you engage with them? Yes. And I think, I think, let me give you three examples. So okay. example number one is sort of a, almost a negative example. It's a company that is well established, um, well entrenched, has gone through good and bad experiences and they have sort of a preconceived notion as to what, what can work and what, what cannot work. Uh? Right. And sometimes they went through a business transformation years ago that, you know, cost millions of dollars and was not successful. So, for that type of company, you need to have a lot of um, a lot of change management, you know, people management, in order to sort of resolve those 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 worries um, and and prove to them that we can really deliver on on a given plan. So that's that's sort of you know company number one. Yeah. Company number two is um, you know established companies that are pushing the limits and. Um, they are, want to get most of their digital digital journey, and they take the time to evaluate and continuously challenge the status quo. That's really fun, you know. There are a few of them <laughs> in the big companies yeah. that are well established, but they don't mind saying, "Hey, I might get it wrong, um, and that is okay as long as I, you know, cut my losses very quickly and then move on." But I want to evaluate that, you know. Companies like Apple, companies like UPS, you know, that are sort of driving driving activities um, in the market. Um, and then the, the other segment that we're seeing that we believe has a huge potential is the mid-market. Yeah? The reason being is um, you don't have preconceived notion. You don't have any bad experiences usually. It's usually companies mm -hmm. that are coming up in size, companies that are growing, you know, even, even um, you know, companies that are, you know, venture capital based or something startups. that startups mm -hmm. exactly startups that are that are growing that are just having their first experience with SAP so the great news there is that we can mold and bring him to sort of the perfect target state right away without having to worry about how do we get him out of their existing processes into the new normal yeah, they are just they're just desperate for sort of a structured business system at the core and then having the possibility to build their their digital process on top of that is that's what we're really excited about. So the mid-market, um, in combination with the with the tools that we have in the business technology platform, it's sort of the perfect complement um, um, of you know uh, pieces of the puzzle right. in order to make them really successful. Well, I, I tell you, the um, the SAP business technology platform, you know, it looms large in in everything that you're doing. I guess you can expect that, but I want to pull the string on that a little bit. Let's. Uh, can you explain your relationship with with SAP? I mean, it doesn't sound like it's just a uh, you know uh, vendor reseller uh, relationship. Uh, you you seem to be really into SAP. So so uh, why are you an, an SAP partner? It sounds like there's a lot more there. Yeah, I think a variety of reasons. I mean, first of all, we fully embrace the SAP partnership uh, and the partnership models that are out there. Yeah? Um, sometimes I get the questions like, so what, what SAP partner are you? And you can be yeah. a sales partner or you can be an implementation partner and you can be a development partner. Well, the reality is sort of check, check, check. We're checking all the boxes. <laughs> that's, okay. that's just part of it. The, the reason for us um, you know, being so aligned with SAP is that we believe in SAP's products, philosophy, yeah. and also vision. Um, and and at some point in time, you uh, we've experienced this. We we just had to make that decision for or against. You know, we couldn't. Mm -hmm. We thought we can't. 
go halfway. You know, we want to be either fully aligned or not. And it, 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 you know, it proved that it was very successful for us. You know, that relationship, that trust in SAP is reciprocated by SAP as well. They know that they, if they're looking for a good SAP implementation partner, mm -hmm. they will come to us in order to, to entrust there with their, with their biggest challenges. That does not mean that we're not sometimes challenging each other. You know? yeah. SAP will come to us and saying, hey, um, I need your help here. We need to do better. And we, on the other side, will tell them you know, what's, what they need to do in their products um, or in their, in their offerings. You know? But yeah. the great news is that we firmly believe in, in the big picture, in the alignment, um, in the philosophy of, of sort of driving and getting, making the world better with, with technology. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also the vision where they're taking their product. Um, and frankly, also the efficiencies. Uh, we firmly believe um, that you know, implementing SAP right drives huge amounts of business improvement and business value, uh, digital or otherwise. You know? But yeah. that's sort of where um, you know, now twitching over to the business technology platform when we're talking about uh -huh. digital transformation, the business technology platform for me is sort of that vehicle that I can use in order to drive, as I said, um, the SpaceX effects, yeah, where I can make mm -hmm. companies really, really efficient and give them uh, an, an, an advantage, um, hopefully an, an unfair advantage in their own business to, to sort of overtake the competition. But that's kind of how I like to work with my customers and make them efficient, make them better um, and run the best as they can be. So, so how does SAP help you in guiding your customers through this digital transformation journey? I think it's it's a various uh, various bits and pieces, and and let me uh -huh. give you two examples that I could um, cite right away. Uh, right. The one is is on the business technology platform. So SAP put together what they called a discovery center. So discovery center is um, is think of it like a catalog of use cases that um, you know show what the business value is, um, allow allows you to sort of. Uh, build that out, usually in a, in a trial environment, and if nothing else, get your feet wet. And yeah. based on what we discussed before, it sort of checks a number of boxes for me. The first one is, you know, it, it's sort of, it's an ideation almost, or a suggestion list for customers to what's out there, what what should you look at? Uh -huh. And I've, yeah. I usually find two types of customers. The one customer is really good on a on a blank piece of paper, on a whiteboard, where you say, okay, what are your challenges? And they will start scribbling stuff down. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The second type of customer or person is the person, and I always call it the wrench improvers. Yeah? You give them a wrench, <laughs> yeah? and they will tell yeah. you 50 million things as to what can be better, made better on that wrench. But you start <laughs> with a clean slate, you know, and they are totally over task. Yeah? Mm. But then... You know, so give them a starting point and, and coming back to the discovery center, these use cases that you have here sometimes act as the catalyst, as the starting point to, to start the discussion to say, this might not be 100% what you have in mind, but is mm -hmm. this sort of in the area? Is this sort of sparking some other ideas? And then we're going off on all kinds of tensions as to, you know, what we can do and what we can do better and how this is not quite what I want, but this is what I want. So that's great. Um, and the other side is that we can test out those those offerings that SAP has and, and sort of put our own subject matter expertise to to bear um, to to make customers better. So that's kind of number one, where SAP is sort of helping us guide the customers through their right. digital transformation journey. Um, the second one is is more on the product side. You know, um, SAP has an offering called Free Tier. Free tier allows the customer to test out digital enhancements. So if you have as a customer, if you are the whiteboard customer or the, the you know the clean slate customer that has uh -huh. a great idea but doesn't isn't really sure whether or not A it is it is real or it can be made real, now you can use an SAP right. helps you sort of start that journey by saying, hey, you know, let's test it out. You know, let's let's build it out, you know, take a, a, a small amount of money put it to use, we're giving you a, an essentially a free environment, and yeah. then you will get to, to a normal uh, milestone decision point to say, okay, it was really successful, let's move it into production, and you can do that with a free tier offering. Or the alternative is, hey, you know, we've spent whatever X thousand dollars in order to test this out. We've come to the conclusion that, 
you know, the machine learning model, we can't get it to higher than 80%. So it, we can't really use it in a production environment. We have to <laughs> wait for another four or five years. And that is a good data point as well. But at least you have done the evaluation and you started the digital journey. You're moving in the right direction. You're moving uh, moving up that that sophistication journal. So those are two examples of of SAP's guiding uh, guiding customers through it. There, there are many more examples, but I've, I felt like those are the two, you know, applicable that are probably resonating with a lot of people that are still on the sort of in the infancy on their digital mm. digital journey rather than sort of on the on the upper echelon of the curve. So so talking about those that are, you know, looking at this digital journey in front of them. So uh, what are your recommendations for these companies that are trying to deal with ERP digital transformation? You know, it's it's a big. It could be a big hairy beast out there. I'll be scared and just run away. <laughs> it, it is, and, and trust me, even in my job, it's it's the hairy beast that will never stop. <laughs> um, just because you know, you think you are sort of, I, I don't want to say on the top of the mountain, and you understand most of these technologies, uh -huh. and, and then one comes along and you say, "Well, here's something else for me to look into and and, and invest in." So, but let me let me sort of give you the right top three. You know, number yeah. one, I would say. Uh, get and stay informed. Uh, it's it's okay. hard to leave the operational reality behind, but inform yourself about what's possible. Benchmark with your peers and invite your vendor to do an innovation week once a year. You know we're happy okay. to we and other, probably our our you know uh, partners, competitors in the system integrator yeah. community are probably happy as well to sort of give you an overview as to what we're doing, what we have done, but then also you know, what we think you should be doing. So don't get hung up on what has been done in the past because then you are going to be a lagger. Uh, then you're waiting sort of, you're <laughs> always minus two years behind the next guy. Yeah, you know, yeah. be the guy that, that wants to challenge the status quo. Um, number two is find a trusted partner. Uh, not just the partner that gives you the lowest bid, uh, but the one yeah. that is honest with you and, and sometimes tells you the things that you don't want to hear. Uh, um, what I've found is that the best relationships and the, the most long-term, the most fruitful and successful relationships I've had with, with my customers is, are the ones where it's way more than, than just sort of a, a, um, a vendor relationship. It's really okay. a partnership. Uh, Trusted partner. partner huh? you know? So where, you know, you can call each other up even after hours and say, hey, something is off, you know, we need to fix this. Um, but that's sort of built that relationship and it's, it's worth way more than the dollars and cents that you see in an RFP response. Um, right. and if you don't value that, you know, then, then you have to deal with, you know, the standard, you know, vendor relationships that you're probably dealing with to today. But my advice would be find a trusted partner, um, that, you know, that is not just building fancy PowerPoint decks, but really, um, the trusted partner that can also execute on on the plan that you're putting together with that partner. Uh, because if the partner tells you that they can do that, they should be able to execute it. And if they don't, then, uh, well, give us a call. Um, and third, embrace new technologies. Um, mm -hmm. In the SAP case, okay. you know, embrace the business technology platform. It's there to say, stay. You know, there were probably years where you as a company and customer thought that, hey, I don't know whether the business technology platform is 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 has longevity. Um, right. I'm telling you, it's there to stay. It is solid. Uh, we're doing lots of work on it. It's a great tool um, and it really has and provides business value. And I'm not advocating on jumping the next shiny toy every single time uh -huh. a new toy comes out, but be open and, and run simple and short proof of concepts to see what technologies can really do for you and, and your business. Uh, um, wow. Companies need some time to get comfortable with new technologies. So a proof of concept or, or a pilot is usually the right size to determine the value, refine any cost estimates that you might have, and, and more important than anything, start that human change management journey that I was talking about to take your even your own internal IT team and sort of get them comfortable with the new normal, which is everything is going to be in the cloud. Yeah? And sometimes <laughs> we're having yeah. sort of hybrid environments where cloud suddenly comes back on premise or you have an on-premise cloud. But the reality is, and, and we're seeing that more and more, all of your development is going to be done in the cloud. Whether or not you're running the program, you know, on-premise or not, that's one thing. But 99% of what we're doing these days is all cloud-based or comes with cloud-based mm. technologies. 
So you need to spin up internally, knowledge-wise, on those paradigms, on the language that is used, on the approaches that are used. So again, embrace that technology because it's there to stay and it's not something that um, you can just think away. So those are the three, I would say, to say, if, you know, if you're dealing with digital transformation, those are the top, my top three that I would, uh, I would give you as a, as a suggestion. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you for your time and perspective today. It seems like it's, it's really all about the relationship. I mean, when you think about digital transformation, uh, you know, many people have the technology is top of mind, but you are really talking about the importance of the relationship. And I, I really, I really like that approach. But, but unfortunately, our, our time has come to an end, Martin. So, so how can my audience learn more about rising and your approach to digital transformation? Well, the good news is um, that is very simple. So uh, <laughs> rising, you can find um, obviously on a web page. Uh -huh. um, at www.rising.com and rising is spelled with a Z just to remind you, not with an S. Um, uh -huh. And yes, um, so we were we were there before SAP came up with the rise model just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> just be clear. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to reach me or follow me, simply enter my name, Martin Stenzik, into Google, LinkedIn or Twitter um, and you will find me. Um, that's the advantage of having a fairly unique name. Um, you know, there are not too many Martin Stenzigs out there. So <laughs> the rate <laughs> for, for my name is pretty high. So Wow, thank you. Well, we'll have those links in the show notes as well. So thank you. Thank you very much. And, and in closing, I would like to invite everyone to check out the wide variety of industry thought leadership that we provide from supplychainnow.com. And you can find Digital Transformers and Supply Chain Now wherever you get your podcasts. So be sure to subscribe. So on behalf of the entire team here at Supply Chain Now, this is Kevin L. Jackson wishing all of our listeners a bright and transformational future. We'll see you next time on Digital Transformers. Thank you for supporting Digital Transformers and for being a part of our global Supply Chain Now community. Please check out all of our programming at supplychainnow.com. Make sure you subscribe to Digital Transformers anywhere you listen to or view the show and follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next time on Digital Transformers.